Polls have been closed for several hours in Tennessee and Kentucky, and we are learning the decisions you made. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rory Johnston. From U.S. House and Senate races to the transit referendum, we have team coverage of all the results and reaction. Of course, the biggest race of the night, whether Vice President Kamala Harris or former President Donald Trump will become the 47th President of the United States. We know Mr. Trump has won both Tennessee and Kentucky. These are the latest numbers from our decision desk nationwide. Those are early voting numbers right there. And of course, CBS News is tracking the very latest. Another big decision Nashville motor voters made choosing to pass the Choose How You Move transit referendum. Introduced by Mayor Freddie O'Connell, it will raise the sales tax, costing residents about $70 a year more to bring enhanced bus services, better sidewalks, and improved WeGo service. Our Jason Lamb live in the Gulch, where supporters of the transit plan reacting to the re results and a celebration there tonight. Yeah, that's right, Rory. You know, it was a bit of a waiting game, as it always is, as folks in this room were waiting for those early vote numbers to drop for a better part of an hour starting at 7 o'clock. They knew because so many people had voted early that when those numbers did come in, it would be a pretty good indication of how this night was going to go. And once those votes did come in, the group here was able to declare victory without actually seeing any results from today's in-person voting numbers. A triumphant Mayor O'Connell took to the podium to address the crowd. We have hundreds of thousands of Nashvillians who did this together. We have made this choice together. And togetherness was the big message of the night, and it really came through in those early vote numbers, which came in at a margin of just less than two to one in favor of the Choose How You Move referendum. That is a significant figure, if not a coincidental figure. That two to one margin that was approved tonight is just about the same margin that the 2018 transit referendum was turned down by Nashville voters. The mayor spoke this evening to why he thinks this proposal succeeded where the 2018 proposal failed. He said this proposal to expand 86 miles of sidewalks, more bus service, and 600 smart traffic lights was a clearer plan and more targeted plan than 2018, which would have dug a tunnel through downtown and put in light rail. The mayor says starting as early as tomorrow, they'll be able to start collecting project bids and other initial work. And tonight, he, he talked to us about the first tangible project or improvement we'll be able to see as part of the plan. When would you think Nashville should be able to see the first bit of new sidewalk from this? That's, uh, I think if we have this conversation a year from now, you should be able to see progress on all three components of the program. You'll see uh, service improvements in WeGo by next summer. Uh, you'll see sidewalks uh, under construction, if not completed by, you know, winter. Uh, and my expectation would be that also you would see new signal technology coming online that connects directly to our traffic management center. So I think within year one, we have known this, Michael, the departments have known this, our team has known this, finance has known this, that uh, we expected to have a clear set of year one deliverables, and I think we'll get to really lean into that work tomorrow. Now, another key point here in approving this referendum, national voters also approved an increase in sales tax, about $70 a year for the average home. The key here is, though, is that sales tax isn't going to be start being collected until April of next year. So it's not like all these projects will all of a sudden start breaking ground. It's going to take some time, including time, for that sales tax to be collected. Live in Nashville tonight, Jason Lamb, News Channel 5. Jason, thank you. Just minutes after the polls closed here in Tennessee, the race was called for Tennessee's U.S. Senate seat. Republican incumbent Senator Marsha Blackburn winning a second term, defeating her Democratic challenger, State Representative Gloria Johnson. Blackburn was the first female senator from Tennessee uh, serving since 2018. This will be her second term. She pledges to help secure our borders, cut taxes, and stop certain dealings with China. Johnson campaigned on keeping women's productive freedom at the forefront and worked to strengthen gun laws. Okay, some on both sides of the aisle have 
a reason to celebrate tonight. Republican lawmakers in particular here in our state and supporters are celebrating down at the Cool Springs Hilton. And that is where we find our Chris Davis. Chris, how are they reacting to Senator Blackburn's win? Rory, just to give you a timeline perspective, polls closed in Tennessee at 7 o'clock. By 7.02, this room erupted in cheers because Donald Trump had won Tennessee as widely expected. By 7.04, we heard cheers again because that's when the race was called, declaring Senator Marsha Blackburn winning re-election to her U.S. Senate seat. Almost immediately in her acceptance speech, she acknowledged her opponent, Representative Gloria Johnson, thanking her for giving her a call. My opponent, Gloria, has called to concede. I appreciate that she did that. And I will say this, six years ago, my opponent never conceded the race. So I thank Gloria for the call, and I do look forward to working with her on behalf of all Tennesseans. Senator Blackburn then launched into some of her common talking points from this campaign, pledging to secure the southern border, curb the opioid epidemic, and block transgender athletes from competing in women's sports. She also touched on some bipartisan bills she hopes to pass, like social media protections for teenagers and cheaper pharmaceuticals for senior citizens. Now, I also asked Senator Blackburn later about the rumor circulating that she might be considered for a cabinet position if Republicans end up winning the White House. If President Trump ends up winning tonight yes. and he calls you and wants you to be part of his administration, is that something you consider or are you happy in the Senate? I have um, thanked them for any consideration that came my way and have let them know that I like working for the people of Tennessee. Overall, legislative Republicans had a lot to cheer for tonight. The Tennessee Senate was able to defend all of their Republican seats in the upper chamber. On the House side of things, there were a few closer races, but at least right now, it looks like there weren't any big upsets that, of course, some Democrats were hoping they might be able to see tonight. That's the latest from Cool Springs in the Franklin area. Rory, back to you. Chris, appreciate it. There are four congressional districts spread across the mid-state. All four Republican incumbents sought re-election to the U.S. House, and the votes are in. Hunter Hoagland is tracking the latest results. No big surprises. No big surprises. And, you know, to put it in plain speak here, if you were a Republican and you were on the ballot tonight, it is a very good night, especially when we're seeing the numbers that Donald Trump is pulling out there, Marsha Blackburn in terms of what Chris just mentioned, and especially these four U.S. House district seats that were up for grabs tonight. The makeup here of what we're looking at is all four of these districts are currently held by Republican incumbents. And I can tell you here, all four of these races have now been called. Each of these four will now head back to Washington and represent Tennessee on a national scale. What we're looking at here, and keep in mind these numbers are all subjected to change here. They're early numbers, but you get the idea here. This race has been called. Mark Green at 60%. This was a guy who was going to drop out of the race. Heard from Donald Trump who said, stay in this race. He did, and obviously doing very well here at 60% of the vote, followed by uh, former Nashville Mayor Megan Berry, who ended up resigning her position here following a controversy of her own surrounding an affair. This this is the race that I think is super interesting here when we look at District 5, right? You're talking about Andy Ogles, who has been the subject of many News Channel 5 investigates pieces here, often facing backlash for, if not embellishing, his resume outright lying about it. Did that affect the vote? It would say no. I pulled the numbers from back in 2022. He was pulling at 55%. Again, this is subject to change here, but he's getting 57% of the vote, followed by political newcomer Miriam Abelfazli. This was a face that we saw right after the Covenant school shooting who led a lot of those protests on Tennessee's Capitol Hill, really pushing for gun reform and what we were hearing were those common sense gun laws. Again, that message not registering with voters as all signs point to Andy Ogles uh, taking back his seat once again. No surprises here when we look at District 6. John Rose and political newcomer Lori Bergman, 68% compared to her 32%. Not much of a different story when we go down here at District 4. Scott Desjardins at 70%, followed by Democrat political newcomer Victoria Broderick. Uh, so, Rory, it really is interesting when we look at these results here. And again, a really good night if you were a Republican who was running for office. Hunter Hoagland, thank you. Now, on the state level, dozens of candidates vying for state house and Senate seats. Democratic leaders hoping they can make some inroads against the Republican supermajority. Flip some seats blue tonight. Kelsey Gibbs live at Madison Station for us, where 
Democrats and their supporters watched the results roll in. Hey, Kelsey. Hi, Rory. Yeah, I've been checking the Tennessee Secretary of State website and re refreshing all throughout the night. And it's still too close to call for some of these local races. But we can tell you that Davidson County Democrats have won all of their seats tonight. We know that Shondell Brooks, she has won for State House 60, which became vacant when Darren Jernigan stepped away from that seat that he held for so many years. And incumbents like State Senator Heidi Campbell and State Rep Bo Mitchell, they are claiming victory tonight as well. And we do know there were about a dozen new Democrats running for a seat at the state capitol, many of them making the decision to run for personal reasons. Examples, Shondell Brooks is a mother whose son died in a Nashville mass shooting. Another mother, Allie Phillips, who tells us that she had to leave the state for an emergency abortion, which sparked her to want to run for office. And they spoke outside the Capitol steps on Monday for a final push and a message for voters. And the issues that they are fighting for are to defend reproductive freedoms. They want to build safer communities by keeping firearms from dangerous people. And they want to, of course, protect children, safeguard Middle Tennessee landscapes and water sources. And we spoke with Senator Campbell tonight, and she gave a victory speech at this Davidson County Democrats watch party. And this is what she had to say. I know that I am preaching to the choir here when I tell you that we have a lot of work to do in Tennessee. And I look forward to all that we're going to do this next four years to eradicate the slate of hate, elect compassionate and reasonable people up and down the ballot, and to pass legislation that supports the people who live here. Now, again, results are still coming in for these local races, but there's one out of Montgomery County. This is House of Representatives for District 67 with Democratic Rep Ronnie Glenn trying to hold on his seat again. It was a close race back in 2020, and it's going to be close again, so we will be definitely keeping an eye out for that one as well as many others. But reporting live in Madison, Kelsey Gibbs, News Channel 5. Kelsey, thanks. A reminder, the ticker at the bottom of your screen with the very latest results as we continue. Down in the growing town of Nolensville, Williamson County, folks there had a chance to decide whether to allow wine in grocery stores. Now, state lawmakers approved this measure almost 10 years ago, but it gives local municipalities the power to decide for themselves. This process begins with gathering signatures to show support, then local leaders have to approve this so a referendum can be placed on the ballot. That happened in Nolensville. One big reason for the push there, both Publix and Kroger plan to open new grocery stores there soon. Earlier today, I spoke with the president and CEO of the Tennessee Grocers and Convenience Store Association, who's pretty optimistic about the outcome. The people in Nolensville have made it clear just by putting it on the ballot that they would like to buy wine where they buy their food. And we're very confident that they're going to make that decision tonight. And that's exactly what they did. Take a look here. Overwhelming support, 89% for wine in grocery stores. It passes easily down in Nolensville. We know it's a lot to keep track of. We're making it as easy as possible so you can find the results in one place. Go to newschannel5.com for real-time election coverage.